So if we take this 7.4 volts VCE and plug it in, the voltage drop, the voltage from here, VC, to here, VE, so that would be VC minus VE, because this is zero, is equal to 7.4 volts. Very interesting circuit. If I increase the current here, the voltage here is going to go down. If I decrease the voltage here, then the voltage here is going to go up. Very interesting device. We can make a graph of the transistor collector curve. We have a curve that looks like this. We have in the 3904 data sheet it said that if you got more than 40 volts from collector to emitter you would be in the breakdown region. It's usually destructive and the, the transistor won't survive it. Um, this is a saturation region right here. Uh, it becomes saturated at, the transistor actually becomes saturated at this point right here. Okay, this would be base current IB is equal to um, 10 microamps. And I see the collector current here would be 1 million. And if you had 10 microamps of base current, let's see, less than one volt, this is where the uh, diode, um, actually this is about 0.2 volts. The transistor saturates at about 0.2, and we'll get into more of that later. Um, if you have a base current of 10 microamps, you're going to have a collector current of 10 milliamps. No matter what the voltage voltage VCE is. Of course, until it gets over 10, 40 volts, and then you get lots of current. It shorts out and then burns open. So let's say we have an IB of 20 microamps. We have 20 microamps here and 20 microamps all day if beta DC is 100. 20 microamps times 100 is 2 milliamps. And no matter what VCE is, no matter what, oh, let's, uh, VCE is voltage collector to emitter. our circuit again here. No matter what our VCE is, we're going to have 20 milliamps. Now, we're not trying to rewrite Ohm's law, but these devices are nonlinear, and these act in a certain fashion. They act that a small collector current small base current controls a large collector current. Let's talk about the power of a transistor wattage dissipated by it. If VCE is uh, let's say 10 volts because of however this circuit here uh, caused it to be and collector current 
equals let's say uh, 20 milliamps the power dissipated by this guy is equal to E times I which is equal to 10 volts times 20 milliamps and that's equal to 200 milliwatts power dissipated so the transistor will have a power rating power dissipated rating in in the data sheet power dissipated is equal to v c e uh, times i c now generally generally i b is small enough so it doesn't matter so that it's usually included in the power dissipation of this um, Remember we said that the collector was the largest part of the transistor. The collector is usually uh, what dissipates all the heat in the circuit. Um, in failures in transistors, I have seen collector to base uh, open, collector to emitter open, and the base to emitter still operating fine. Um, some pretty strange stuff. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, this is the active region. You want to design your circuit so that the transistor is operating in here. Otherwise, you have the region where the transistor lets the smoke out, or you're dealing with a region that you can't really predict. Another thing to be said is that uh, with a transistor circuit like this, the beta DC, put tail on that, of one transistor is probably not the same as the next one. Uh, on the data sheet, they gave us a range of beta DC of 30 to, what was it, 300. Uh, we noticed in some labs that uh, you put a circuit like this one together and one transistor would have uh, 7.4 volts here and another transistor would have 7 volts. Another one would have almost 8 volts. And there was quite a bit of difference in manufacturing of these transistors.